Hello world and welcome back. And today we're right back on the Centurion with some really cool stuff with the Hawk Drive. And speaking of the Hawk Drive, we actually got it spun up in the previous episode. And we were even able to load and execute the Whipple, the Warex initial program loader. But we hit a brick wall pretty much immediately because it was asking for a passcode and we didn't know the passcode, which is a hilarious problem to have. But it turns out that we don't really need the passcode because honestly, I don't really want to use the Hawk Drive as it is on the computer. I mean, it's incredibly cool, but it's also incredibly terrifying and the threat of a head crash is constantly looming in the background. So the main purpose of having the Hawk Drive in the system is to be able to pull the data off of the platters and store it someplace else as a backup. And well, it turns out that we have a perfect way of doing that via the Diag card with test operating system or TOS. But this is gonna require a lot of very custom software. And that's all very much so beyond my capability but it's not beyond the capability of Gavin because Gavin over on the Discord has done some of the most amazing work I've seen yet. He wrote an entire diagnostic package for the Centurion called CCDP or the Centurion Computer Diagnostic Package. And it's essentially an operating system. It's like a very streamlined version of CPM almost. And we were able to actually stream out the data of a full removable platter. Now we haven't really found anything that exciting on it. There were no programs or software or anything that we could execute, but we'll take a look through that one at the end because what I wanna do right now is I wanna try and pull the data off of another removable platter. I have five of these removable platters and who knows what's hiding on any of them. So that's our goal today. But before we start ripping data off of it, I wanna walk you guys through exactly what Gavin built, CCDP, because it's really special. Then we'll spin the Hawk Drive up, we'll fire CCDP up, and we'll hopefully pull a full another uh, removable platter off of the system. And then we'll take a look at what we found at the end. So this is, <laughs> this is really exciting. Let's get to it. <laughs> So the problem is that we have a bunch of data. Well, a bunch here is kind of relative. I have about five removable data packs that are five megabytes each, which sounds incredibly small, uh, but when we're talking about five megabytes of pure binary data, that is a lot. Uh, but we have all of that data and we want to back it up and we want to take it off of the Centurion and store it on something like a modern laptop because well if I can get it onto the laptop that means I can back it up in the cloud or put it onto USB sticks and we have the software saved uh, but how do we get it from one place to another and there's two aspects to the problem that we got to solve the first is hardware and for this one Actually, it's pretty easy. The uh, Centurion uses a uh, multiplexer card that outputs RS-232 levels. So we can just get one of these relatively cheap RS-232 to USB converters, uh, but the DB9s on the Centurion are not a standard pinout. So I had to use this little breakout board to rewire it a little bit to get it to work. But once we got that done, hardware side is completely taken care of. Now comes the really difficult side, the software side. This laptop is running Microsoft Windows 10 and the Centurion is, well, it doesn't even have an operating system on it. The closest that we have is a test operating system or TOS. And really it's not an operating system as such, it's more a memory monitor pretty much just allows us to peek and poke uh, bits of memory. But we can also jump to a bit of memory and execute some custom code from there. So that kind of opens a window for us to write some custom software that can live on the Centurion and some custom software that can live on the laptop to allow the two to talk to each other. And this is what CCDP is. Now, uh, Gavin has written this fantastic internal technical overview. Um, it's a couple pages long. It's written really well, and it goes into a lot of really great detail about what CCDP is. Uh, now, I'm just gonna go into kind of a high-level overview of it here, um, so definitely check out the wiki for more detail. Uh, but essentially, 
CCDP is two different types of program packages. We have the program that lives on the Centurion, CCDP, and then we have the program that lives on the laptop, which we're calling Serial Dir. Now, CCDP really only cares about two things. It cares about the serial multiplexer card, so sending data out or receiving data in, and it cares about a file system. Serial Dir is that file system. And so what Serial Dir is doing is it's acting as a sort of translator between the type of file system that CCDP is expecting and the type of file system that Windows 10 is expecting. So this way we can stream a file out of the multiplexer card into the laptop. Serial Dir translates that into a binary file and stores it on the hard drive here. Now, CCDP has a lot of uh, very basic controls. It allows essentially opening a file, closing a file, uh, modifying the file, and writing to and from it. But it does that all in 256 byte chunks. And so if we think of one file as like a container with a collection of 256 byte chunks in it, we just modify the 256 byte chunk and then throw it in that file. Now, thinking about how the Hawk drive itself is laid out, we essentially split it up into a collection of cylinders. That's gonna be essentially a ring around the platter. Uh, and then we break that cylinder up into uh, 16 different sectors. Now, that sector is going to contain a certain amount of data. The way that the Centurion lays that data out is a little weird, actually. Now, we don't actually need to think about anything other than the 400 bytes of data because the two Hawk controller cards, disk one and disk two, take care of everything else and they only send the data out. So when we tell CCDP to uh, send the Hawk to a specific location and give us the data from that location, we're going to receive 400 bytes of data. So we take that data and we throw it into memory, and then we want to copy the data from memory out through the MUX card into the laptop. Uh, but 400 bytes is kind of a weird number. Remember I said that uh, CCDP is working in chunks of 256 bytes. So ultimately we have 512 bytes. What we do is we just fill up 400 bytes and then pad out the remaining 112 bytes and then send that out as two 256 byte blocks. And then that gets sent across the cable into the laptop here, and the laptop updates the file with the new 256 bytes. And well, we just do that repeatedly until we get all five megabytes. And it takes quite a while, but it seems to work really, really well. Uh, so, well, now that we have kind of an idea of how we're getting the data from one to the other, Let's spin that drive up and get the laptop hooked up to the computer and start trying to dump some data. All right, let's go ahead and get to work. I'm gonna slide the Hawk drive out first, and then I'm going to disconnect the actuator here for the heads. Uh, and with that disconnected, what this will allow me to do is to power up the Hawk drive, spin the platters up, and let it purge for a while to make sure that there's absolutely zero dust inside. Uh, and then we'll spin it down, plug everything back in, spin it back up again, and then hopefully start reading it. So I need to actually turn the computer on for this because the Hawk drive is plugged into the switched outlet of the main power supply. So we'll flip that on. Okay, so the computer is on now. Uh, and then we'll reach around here and we will flip the power onto the Hawk drive. All right, the cooling fan is pushing air through. I'm gonna hit the start stop button here. That'll spin the platters up. Yeah, now they're spinning up. It sounds like a jet engine every time. <laughs> All right, so the platters have spun up. The heads will not actuate. So I am just gonna let it sit here like this for a while to purge. All right, so while this Hawk drive is purging, I wanna go ahead and get the computer connected to the laptop through CCDP. So the first thing I need to do is I need to open the uh, CCDP program on the laptop through the PowerShell. 
Uh, so we'll just go ahead and run Serial Dir. That's the program. Uh, and set it on COM3 at 19200 baud. Hit entered. Okay, so it says opened at 19200. Uh, okay, so now on the computer itself, we need to set it up for uh, uh, 19,200 baud. So we'll do MF206, and then this opens up the MMIO port for the MUX, uh, and then we'll do F6. That's gonna set it to the correct baud rate. Okay, so the MUX is ready. The next step is to get the boot loader onto the memory of the computer so we can execute it. I've already gone ahead and done that because it's quite a long program. Uh, but if we look at M01E8, that is our bootloader, C001, E1, F2, 07, D0, and so on. Uh, so the next step is to hit G01E8. We'll hit enter. Yeah, there we go. We have the et symbol up here. From here, we type in 32k.sys, hit enter, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now we got CCDP loaded up. That's awesome. All right, so the next step is to spin down the hawk, hook the heads back up, then spin the hawk back up again, let the heads load, and then hopefully we can start dumping a hawk platter. All right, so it's running, and it's a little scary because the hawk drive is spinning and doing things, and the, the fear of head crash is always looming, but so far, it seems to be working perfectly. Uh, you can see that we're up to cylinder 000F, uh, and all of the little dots here means that it read uh, the cylinder and the track perfectly. If we get a read error, it will try to clear the read error three to four times, uh, and then it'll just move on to the next one. And if it doesn't clear the read error, we get an X. Uh, but it seems to be working really well right now, so fingers crossed, it'll run all the way to the end. Uh, which I believe is hex 0196 uh, or something like that. Um, so anyways, what it means is that we've got a long ways to go. It's going to be about an hour. Uh, so I'm going to put my headphones on, chat with some people, and uh, just kind of babysit it here while it dumps. But whew, this is exciting. We have potentially another full platter coming off. That's awesome. All right, it took about an hour and maybe 15 minutes, but we got a perfect dump of the removable platter. We have the entire thing backed up on the hard drive of my laptop, so we're not gonna lose any of that data again. Now, what did we find on these removable platters? Well, on the first platter, I said it was mostly pretty boring stuff. And that's true. It was formatted as just a purely data platter. There was no software, there was no applications. We did find some remnants of what we think was some software on there, but it had been overwritten and kind of broken and it wasn't really all that useful. There were a couple really interesting and useful things that we found though. Uh, the first was the Whipple, and the Whipple sits pretty much at uh, cylinder zero, track zero, right at the very beginning. And it was fantastic to find the real Whipple on the Hawk drive. The Whipple contains self-modifying code. And so we really needed to see what the Whipple looked like in its original form, and that's what the first platter offered us. Now, also the first platter let us get familiar with how the file structure that Centurion uses is built, and that gave us ample time to start writing uh, little snippets of software to make that file structure a little easier to be read. Now, before we move off of the first removable platter, we did find some interesting ASCII strings in there. Now, just like the uh, proms on the Diag board, we had to strip the eighth bit, but once we did, we found uh, some interesting strings with beer purchases, or beer wolf. <laughs> so, that is, that takes the cake. Beer purchases and beer wolf, that's, that's just awesome. <laughs> Uh, now, unfortunately, I can't share this platter with everybody because it is full of a lot of really pretty sensitive bank information and names and personal information that we don't need to be sharing with people anyways. And it doesn't matter because that's really kind of boring accounting information. All of the really exciting stuff is on the second platter that we pulled. This is the directory listing for the second platter. and. 
Uh, well, this is a wonderful little utility that Mesaka wrote, a little Python script. It goes through and it reads the directory listing and then it writes it out uh, in very readable plain text. And we can start seeing what all is on this drive. Uh, and so the name of the removable platter, that volume is called soft term. Uh, we're not entirely sure what that means, but soft could stand for software. Uh, the folder that is a question mark contains all of the Centurion specific testing program. So a much more in-depth uh, test operating system that allows you to change huge blocks at a time. So that's really exciting. But the really, really exciting files and folders are at load at OSN and at sys. So when you first turn on the computer and load from the removable platter, it loads the Whipple and the Whipple automatically searches for the file called at load. If it doesn't find that file, it goes to the Whipple prompt, which is where we were last time. If it does find the at load file, it automatically loads it, which is a second stage bootloader. And one of the things it does is it searches for a file called at OSN and it's a system configuration file. So it does a lot of system configuration stuff. Most notably, it sets up the memory for the kernel. And then it looks for a file called at sys oseg0 or oseg1. And these actually execute the operating system. That's right. We have the full operating system on this platter. We found it and we backed it up. We've got it now saved. <laughs> That's, whew, that is such a massive relief, especially after seeing uh, so many crashed platters, like the one that's hanging up on the wall. We thought that was maybe our only chance at having a backup of the operating system, but it turns out it was backed up on this removable platter the entire time. Not just the operating system, but there is a legion of other really cool software hiding out on here. So the next obvious step is to spin the Hawk drive back up and boot into the operating system, which is exactly what I tried and it didn't work. <laughs> Cause that's how my luck's been going. Uh, read errors, we, we tried getting back into it, it just errors out with read errors. Now this is not the first time that I've had it working and then suddenly had it not working and giving us read errors. Uh, we tried both the removable platter and the fixed platter. Now we have, I think, two separate problems going on here. The fixed platter has a thermal issue because well, even before our current read error problem, we were getting read errors with it whenever I would try to dump it. It seems that you only get about 10 minutes of operation time out of the fixed platter before it just devolves into read errors only. Now it's not a head crash, which is fantastic news. It just means that we have potentially a chip or something on the electronics side that is failing when it gets too hot. The other problem that we have is that whenever you spin the Hawk drive down, it pulls the heads back and that voice coil comes all the way back right up to the magnet. Now there's two little rubber bumpers in there to prevent the voice coil from slamming into the metal of the magnet and those have been disintegrated because they're 40 years old. And so every time we spin it down, it was metal on metal contact and that could cause the heads to misalign by just fractions of fractions of millimeters. And that could be enough to push either the sectoring alignment out of whack or the uh, vertical alignment out of whack. And I think that's the problem we have now. So the next step is to do some more repair work on the Hawk drive. And then if we can get it passing the read test on the dyad card reliably, we'll boot back up into it and hopefully boot into the operating system. I have no idea how that's gonna go. Hopefully it all goes really well, but that is exactly what we're going to tackle in the very next episode. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this extremely monumentous occasion because we found the operating system and we have it backed up. So thank you so much and I hope to see you next week when we get to work on the Hawk Drive. <laughs>